Hi everyone, um, thank you so much again for tuning in to my YouTube channel. Um, this is uh, James Faden, and uh, today's topic uh, is on the brain. As you can see, I've already done the, the sketching here. Um, to begin with, the brain is divided into two cerebral hemispheres. There's the left cerebral hemisphere and the right cerebral hemisphere. And to be specific, the left cerebral hemisphere controls the right side of the body, while the right cerebral hemisphere controls the left side of the body. So everything that we are feeding, everything that we are feeding on the right side of the body is generated in the left cerebral hemisphere. And everything that we are feeding in the right, in the left side of our body is also generated in the right cerebral hemisphere. So to get an understanding, we are going to draw the structure of the brain. So here this uh, is the structure of the brain. And the brain is divided in two lobes. This is the light upper part of the brain and uh, it's called the cerebrum. And the, 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 the lobe at the back the, the it's what we call the occipital lobe and this is the lobe at the back in the occipital bone and uh, this bit at here is uh, the temporal lobe and underneath the cerebrum this is uh, what we call the temporal lobe Then uh, we have also the frontal lobe, which is in the frontal bone of, of the scalp. So it's what we call the frontal lobe. And it's one of the most uh, interesting thing about the brain is that because uh, the lobe of the brain, all of them lie under each bone of the brain are specifically according to the name of the bone. So for example, the frontal lobe is in the frontal bone of the uh, scalp. And the occipital lobe is in the occipital lobe, the occipital bone of the bone or of the skull. So that's one of the interesting things about the brain. So here we have the frontal lobe. And this bit right here is uh, the parietal lobe. And uh, This is the parietal lobe. Of course, we are the we are we are just specifically focusing on one cerebral hemisphere. And uh, as introduced earlier on uh, during this uh, uh, series, it was said that the brain is uh, divided into two cerebral hemispheres. There's the right cerebral hemisphere and the left cerebral hemisphere. So here we're just talking about either one of the cerebral hemispheres. It could be the left cerebral hemisphere or it could be the right cerebral hemispheres. <coughs> And down here, we have uh, a bit of sort of uh, long structure like this. And this bit here is uh, what we call the brainstem. So this is the brainstem. <coughs> this is the E, the brainstem. And the brainstem is continuous with the spinal cord. Down here we have the spinal cord. So there's a bit of a window where the, the, the brainstem is in the cranial cavity and then the, the, the spinal cord, where the spinal cord just joins the brain, starts the spinal cord down there. So the window in through which the, the, brainstem, the, the brainstem and the spinal cord meets is what we call the foramen magna. Foramen literally means window, magna means big. So it's just a big window through which the brain leads the through which the brain leads joins leads to join the spinal cord. So this is the foramen magnum. So it's the foramen magnum. It's the window just in the behind there where the spinal cord joins in with the brainstem. 
information, the brainstem is divided into three parts. The brainstem is divided into three parts, and these are the pons. <coughs> The, 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 the upper part of the brain, the, the mid stem is called the mid brain. And the middle part is called the pons. And the lower part is called the medulla oblongata. So I'll just draw it here. The medulla oblongata. And the medulla oblongata is the one which contains the cardiac center, the respiratory center, and the vasomotor center. So it's the one which is controlling all the life-sustaining activity. So for example, should someone come in in our clinical area without the, the brainstem, then in many parts of the world, we find this as the case. Because the patient can't breathe without respiration. It's the one which is controlling the respiratory center. Of course, if, if they don't have the, the brainstem, the brainstem is not working at the moment, then we can ventilate the patient. But the moment the ventilator is turned on, is the patient is removed on from the ventilator, then that will lead to death. So it's very, very important that the brainstem is maintained and it's uh, taken care of so that it's not damaged. Just to mention a few functions of the brain, um, just uh, in front of the frontal lobe here, there's an area called the motor cortex. And the motor cortex is where all the body movements are initiated. This is where we move. This is where when we decide we want to move our foot, when we decide we want to move our hand, when we decide we want to move anything, all those nerve impulses are generated in the brain in an area called the motor cortex. That's why it's called motor cortex. It's controlling all the body movements. So it's the motor cortex which is controlling all the body, mo body movements. And as mentioned earlier on, it is in the light motor cortex where we have the movement of the left side of the body. All the left side of the body movement are initiated from the light motor cortex. And if you decide you want to move any part of your light side of the body, of course the demarcation is in here on the sternum. So light side of the body is going to be controlled by the left cerebral hemisphere and the cerebral motor cortex. You move, it's going to be generated in there. So this is the motor cortex. It's uh, in the frontal lobe. And the other thing to know is that there is also an area just in behind the, behind the behind the frontal lobe. And this area is what we call the sensory cortex. And this is also the area where all the body sensations are generated from. And inside the sensory cortex, there is a man or a woman called the homunculus. It's called the sensory motor man, motor man or sensory, sensory homunculus or the, motor, the sensory man or woman. Sensory little man or sensory little woman. Sorry for that. It's in the sensory cortex of the brain. So each and every human being, they have got what we call, I, they have got what we call two human beings in their brain. There's a sensory, sensory little man or woman and the motor little man or woman. These are the ones where all the body sensations are generated. So suppose you want to move your foot, then that nerve impulse is going to be generated in the motor cortex of the brain from an area where the foot of that sensory motor little man is. So for example, here is the motor little man. And it's represented more or less upside down. It's facing upside down. So its legs are up and then the body, the, the head is towards the down there. So this is what we call the homunculus. 
if it's if it's in the motor cortex, it's called the sensor, the motor little man. If it's in the also in the sensory cortex, there is another one. And this bit here is a sensory little man or woman. If you are a woman, it's a sensory little woman. If you are a man, it's a sensory little man. This is called the homunculus. This is where all body movements are initiated with regards to the parts of the body that you want to move in. Now, going in the occipital lobe, we have the area. This is where vision is generated. So this is where vision is generated. So light is going to come back outside the real world, coming through, through the eye, transducted in through the optic nerve and goes to the brain. That is where movement, what, that is where sight, vision is going to be generated and then you'll be able to aware that, oh, I am seeing it. So this is where all the vision is going to be generated. And of course it's dark. So all the light that you are seeing, you are seeing in darkness right now. So it's the occipital lobe that generates light. And uh, coming in, but this is the palatal lobe, of course. Uh, coming in back here, in the frontal lobe, there's also an area here, just in front of the uh, frontal lobe. In this area, it's important because it's the area which allows us to put our eyes exactly where we want to be, where we want to put them. It controls our eye muscles. So you, if you decide you want to look straight or you want to look somewhere there, it's this part which is controlling that part. So it, this area is called the frontal eye field. That's why it's called the frontal eye field. It's for the eye specifically. It wants you to look exactly in the one direction where you want to look. Without it, you can't look directly where you want to look it. Exactly. So it's the frontal eye field. The frontal eye field. Again, there's another interesting area in the brain, and uh, this area here, just in front of the frontal lobe, just in front of the motor cortex, this area is very important because it's an area which turns thoughts into speech. What do I mean by that? Wow. Well, Suppose I want to name something, and I've forgotten the name. So it's this area which is going to bring back the meaning of that word. It's not going to actually it's going to bring back the meaning. It's the when it's area, but this area is going to give me the word that I should speak. So, for example, I want to name the book. So it's this area which is going to give me that word, book. So it's very important. This is the area which turns thoughts thoughts into speech, what you are thinking, and then it turns them into speech, and then you say it out, you say, oh, book, oh, the body, oh, the brain, so it's this part of the brain, and it's called the broca's area, this is what we call the broca's area, it is very important because it helps us to say the words we want to say, it turns thoughts into speech, so it's the broca's area of the brain which turns thoughts into speech, so I will name this area as the broca's area, just in front of the front of, uh, in the front of the motor cortex, it's a broca's area. This area turns thoughts into speech. And then there's another area, another very important area in the brain, which is located in the side of the temporal lobe of the brain. And this side of the brain is very important because it helps us to understand the meaning of the concept of the words being said unto us saying, what does this person mean? This person is saying this way. This person is talking to me. What does this mean? In order for me to have a conversation and reply, I need to understand this, what the person is talking about. So for you to understand what the person is talking about, it's because of this area in here of the brain. And this area is called the Wenus area. I will draw, I would like to name for this, the, the Wenus area. It's the part of the brain, of course, which helps us to know the meaning of the words that are being said unto us. So I'm being talking to you right now. I'm telling you that it's this part of the brain which is doing that in life. 
So for you to understand and to know, in order for you to know, for you to have a question, for you to, un to understand and to know, maybe you have a question or you misunderstood it, it's because of this way you said it. It's going to give you the understanding of the way that the person is talking about. And then in order for you to reply and have the conversation this way, the, the focus area is going to give you the ways to say, which ways should I tell this person so that also they, we have a continuous conversation. It's very interesting, isn't it? Because in the palatal lobe, there is an area here called the auditory area. Sound is going to come in, 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 in through your eyes, your ears, sorry. And then when that sound goes into the brain, then <coughs> it's going, this brain, the, the wings area, is going to give you the meaning of those words. In order for you to reply and have a conversation, this is going to give you the, the words to say. So it's very interesting, isn't it? Um, the, other, the other thing I would like to talk about is the, the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata of the brain. So the medulla oblongata of the brain is the one which controls the respiratory center, the cardiac center, and the vasomotor center. As we said already, that the death of the spinal cord leads to death. Because you cannot live without respiration. You cannot live without respiration, of course. You need to breathe. You need oxygen. If you are not ventilated, and then the, 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 the medulla oblongata is damaged the, the brain stem, in the brain stem, then you are not going to survive. You are going to die. That's why in many parts of the world, they define death as the death of the spinal cord. The, the brain stem, sorry. So it's very important. It's very important. So we have just done just a quick recap of the brain. Um, the next thing that we want to do is uh, we want to see how the brain is protected. Of course, the brain is very delicate organ, and the brain needs to be protected. It's good that the brain is protected from damage because once the nerves, once the nerves, the tissues of the brain are damaged, they can't be replaced. In the old days, they used to say that the the, 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 the brain cells were there was no enough not any traces of mitosis was going on, but as science uh, upgrades nowadays, they say there is a few mitosis taking place in the brain. So we are going to talk about how the brain is uh, protected, and uh, we are going to talk about some of the conditions related to the brain, but. We should always remember that the brain, the light side of the brain, controls the left side of the body, and the light, the left side of the brain, controls the right side of the body. It's because at the level of the spinal cords, the nerves coming from the light cerebral cortex decuses with the nerves coming from the left cerebral cortex. There's a process of decusation, the crossover like this. And then this one goes over to the left side, and then this one goes over to the right side of the body. I hope that makes sense. That's the reason why the right side of the brain will be con will be controlling the left side of the body because they take his head, isn't it? Yeah. <coughs> and the other thing to note about is uh, the cerebellum. That's at the back of the brain. There's a structure just like a cauliflower. And this is a cerebellum, just like this, the salamin magna. Um, the cerebellum uh, controls the automatic lens function. What you mean by automatic lens function is that you learn something, and then in later life you start doing that thing, even without thinking about it. That is automatic lens function. So you can light your bicycle without knowing that you are riding a bicycle. You start even calling someone, you talk to someone on the phone, but you are busy riding the bicycle without knowing that I'm riding the bicycle. You are not controlling that, of course. It's the cerebellum of the brain which is controlling that. It controls automatic lens function. You are not aware that you are doing something, but you are doing it at the light, at the light way. So it's a cerebellum. It controls automatic lens function. And of course, this is the spinal cord. The spinal cord. So this is the spinal cord. <coughs> and uh, one concept, one last thing I would like to talk about is that uh, 
when someone is left-handed, then it's most likely that their speech centers, this is because of uh, the, the weighing failure, the blockers area, and the auditory areas. The weighing failure, and, sorry, and the blockers area, their speech centers. If you are left-handed, then these are going to be in the light-cerebral hemisphere. But if you are light-handed, just like me, I'm light-handed, I use everything on the light-hand side, so it's obvious that my speech areas, my speech centers are in the left cerebral cortex. It's a very important concept. It's a very important concept because of the people who are left-handed and people who are light-handed. It's very important that we know this concept and we know how to deal with such people when we come in our clinical areas. So the next thing that we want to do is how the brain is protected, how the brain lies in the cerebral spinal fluid, and from, more, from there we'll be done with our topic on the brain. Thank you very much also for watching my video. God bless you.